usobanuye byinshi bigaragara inzira yari ikomeye ariko nagize ikibazo nifuza kubaza ese musobanura mute impamvu mwari mufite ikomeye yumvaga ko mushobora gutsinda ubutegetsi bwa Habyarimana bwari bufite ingabo zikomeye ndetse bashyigikiwe n'amahanga mu byukuri yumvikanaga nkakomeye nyuma yaho uyu mukanye tugeze aha general Kabarebe yadusobanuriye uko mwagiraga mu mutaru ko mwasanze bimeze ko byasaga nk'ibiteye ubwoba impamvu ikomeye mwagize ukumva ko muri butsinda uru rugamba kugeza uyu munsi nyuma y'imyaka 30 micha ntabwo nta guarantee nta kintu cyakwemezaga ngo ibyo urwani ruzabigeraho ariko wagomba kurwani nene we uko nicyo wahisemo kandi niyo nzere ya riri mbere ya warebaga wakoresha gusa we addressing your force i think back in 1990 you told them in swahili how we caught Jeshi hili litakuwa msingi wa mabadiliko and then he went on to tell them uh, sasa ndio maana matendo yetu yanapaswa kuwa tofauti na yale ya wale tunapigana nao medical supplies and other things we needed so it was easy this position was easy to connect us with the world but to connect us with the, the your name is one that is known for international leadership but today would like to know how do you take care of Paul Kagame beyond the official roles that you play? President, take us back a little bit. We want to understand what was your state of mind in that specific moment uh, when you gave the order that started the campaign to fight against the genocide against the Tutsis. Thank you. Uh, first of all, um, let me thank you for this moment. Uh, much as uh, going back in time sometimes is very difficult uh, at least on my part uh, I, 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 I wish i could forget uh, completely some of those things or days and but anyway that that is life so what you've just said is very true. Uh, we are here. We have uh, now uh, recollected the picture of uh, literally have a map of this place uh, fixed somewhere in my mind. It can't go away. Um, more so what can't go away is uh, what was happening in our country and uh, what uh, was facing us and we had to deal with. Um, you know, um, I speak from my understanding. Um, when you are faced with a situation like that was at the time. There are a few things that come to your mind. And there are a few choices. Either uh, you face what it is, however difficult it is, and uh, invest everything in you to deal with that. or you break down and run away there is really nothing in between either you do something and uh, or, or don't do it and 
the consequences either way are very obvious. But at that time, at that time, sometimes it is not obvious. You only come to think about it later. So from the beginning, when the struggle started, uh, we understood the magnitude, the weight uh, we have to carry uh, in doing what we are trying to do and achieving what we had in mind. We never underestimated. Uh, but it, can, it turned out to be even much bigger, much more complicated than anyone could have thought. But still, we were there, so you have to deal with it the way it happened. So what was, in, what was it that was in the mind? Um, you don't want to go too far ahead of yourself, because if you do that, you probably will make a mistake, because you are either you are thinking about to defeat or thinking about to victory, which has not happened. And if you thought of one, if you are sure you are going to succeed, it may end up actually being a failure. Or if you think you have already failed, uh, that means you're not going to try as much as you could have. And uh, you, you, you may actually end up with a failure uh, when it could have been different, when you could have succeeded if you tried everything you could. So here, this is the place um, where so many things happen. First of all, taking this place and occupying it and turning it into headquarters for uh, the RPF and the RPA combined uh, must have happened in 1992, I think, around April maybe, if I remember, or towards that. Because the RPA was involved in the fighting along the border and we hadn't taken much of the territory inside Rwanda. We were really surviving along the border between Rwanda and Uganda, where some of us had come from. And um, so the, the RPF, meaning the chairman, the commissioners, were not part of the fighting force. We are staying in different parts. In fact, we had headquarters in, in Brussels, Belgium. But we also had another in Kampala, Uganda. That's why it all started. Um, and then sub headquarters in different parts of the world. So when we took this place, we were able to bring the two closer together, or really together, the RPA and the RPF. And um, this became our headquarters after uh, taking those, you know, a little bit of history. when. Um, the war started in uh, 1990. I was um, that before that I was serving in the Ugandan army and so on and so forth. Most of us were, or a number of us, and um, uh, when the war started, I was not uh, anywhere near here. I was. Uh, attending a military course in 
Kansas, Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, uh, Command and General Staff College. Yeah, but I had now to work my way back uh, to, to be here with the rest. So when I came, I found uh, uh, chaos. Uh, because the leader, the first leader of uh, our struggle had been killed on the second day of the attack, uh, Fred Rugujema, and um, so you understandably, it was already a difficult situation, then you, the organization loses a leader, and uh, uh, what follows is it's easy to understand. Uh, so when I came back uh, in the first two weeks of October, I arrived back from the US and uh, came and joined the others and tried to reorganize. And so that's when we organized and started fighting in a more organized manner because of that chaos I am talking about that happened uh, when we lost uh, uh, the leader who had uh, led the struggle. Um, so that's, that's um, trying to cut things short so that it is not a too long story but uh, so that's how all the way from then that chaos came 90 past, 91, and then 92, we found ourselves here and what I was just narrating happened. Uh, and it happened after we had taken places around here. In fact, that's, uh, that was specifically after attacking Biumba, the Chumbi now. We are going to have a meeting. Mm -hmm. we, there were uh, government forces of that time. And there were, there were also forces deployed here in different paths. So we, we planned and moved from the east because we were more towards the Nyagatare and uh, in between. We were trying to survive. Um, so we organized and uh, attacked a number of uh, government enemy positions uh, around, including the one here, which happened uh, last after actually taking the Biumba then, the Chumbi and different other parts. Uh, we did by bypassing their positions and actually attacked them from the back. We went through the enemy deployments, cut through and the, those who were here didn't know we had attacked Tibiumba uh, then. And uh, the others in a place called Rukomo and uh, other places, Bungwe and I don't know whether they still bear those names, I haven't followed the great, but uh, mm -hmm. so then we took this place because our positions were now far ahead, so this was more or less protected and um, that's why we turned it. We had the headquarters, it was making it easy for us from here to the border, I think it's about 30 kilometers maybe something like that. So we would operate, going forward and spread wherever we needed to. But at the same time we had access to the border with Uganda and that's how most of the time we used to get food and medical supplies and other things we needed. So it was easy, this position was easy to connect us with the world but to connect us with the, the uh, country and uh, enabled us to carry out the operations we had to carry out. 
So we grew from here quite fast. And um, yeah, so that, that is um, um, a number of things. It was coordinating from the east, but also the that north map is when we were in Ibirunga. So it was like this. So here we used to coordinate. Um, so what was in my mind when it came to the time, you know, there came a time there were peace negotiations and in Arusha and then it failed and I remember in 1993, yeah, it was 93, February 8th, I think, uh, the Arusha peace negotiations failed and because the government had started killing the people in the Chibirira. We started killing the Babugwe in those areas. And we told them we can't be here talking peace. And then we, they kill the people again. So that means we are going to fight again. And so the, the, the negotiations failed in 92. Two, we stopped because of that and we resumed the fighting. In fact, that's when we took now a, lot, a, big, a much bigger territory than we even had when we resumed the fighting uh, later on. Uh, we spread and... Uh, yeah, so... From 92, no, 93 February, we had had, because of ceasefire and in peace negotiations, we got an opportunity and trained the uh, 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 fighters and uh, they were ready for the next task, meaning when the ceasefire broke, then we resumed fighting, we took uh, you heard of the demilitarized zone that you talked about, you have heard about. When we fought, took a territory, then there was a global outcry and everybody was descending on us. And they thought we were going to take Kigali actually. But I don't think, much as we could easily have militarily, from the operational point of view, would have easily taken Kigali, but I thought politically it would be a big mistake, in, and that's why I prevailed over. There was the urgency for people to, to say, "What? Well, let's finish the job." But I, but I thought it wasn't going to the job wasn't to get finished because. In a way, we would be overstretched, then we are taking on something much bigger than we can handle, organizing the country, but still the forces were, they were being defeated here, but as the government was still established, you know, they still had forces. I think we would have faced bigger problems than uh, people thought. So, but, when you were being told you must go back so that peace talks continue, resume and continue. Um, in the end, we put a demand which will not uh, 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 relinquish. We demanded that for the areas we have taken, big part of the country as a result of, the, of breaking the ceasefire by government and so on and so forth. We cannot return this, this area or these positions to the government. <laughs> they've lost that and they've lost it because of their own big mistake. 
So we compromise to make things simple for everybody. We, we, we actually gave in to some demands, but created a formula that would allow us to take it. We said, if we leave this place, it should be demilitarized, and maybe UN or there was also at the time some African Union observers who were here and um, said they should monitor this area. The government should stay where we pushed it to and for us we have no problem going back to our positions. And this area in between remains a, a demilitarized zone. But we had already registered a huge victory. Uh, we were able to connect with the people in the country um, to a great extent. We um, it put pressure on the government because they really got a very bad beating and, and they were now open to more serious discussion. And that's what. So everything was being coordinated now from here, from Murindi. So when it came the genocide, uh, even before that, we, we, we used to monitor everything happening. We used to monitor militias being trained in the there are hundreds of thousands in every district as we have them now. Um, and the plans, the plans would leak, we had the people who would tell us. And we used to share it with the, the UN, the forces that were present here in the country. And, and we found actually they knew a lot about what the preparations were, um, by whom, where, and for what intention. They, they knew. They, when you hear people talk about genocide and as if it was something that just happened or happened because of uh, Javier Mana's death or this and that, it's all rubbish. They, 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 this happened way before. Uh, in fact, uh, Darel, General Darel, the commander of the UN forces, used to come here many times. He would come by helicopter or by road many times. There are so many visitors who used to come here, even from outside of Rwanda. And, uh, and we used to share this information, we used to discuss it. We would, give them information you have, give them evidence, give them, and sometimes they will, we will find they already know the, uh, so, yeah, uh, there's a particular question you raised, what the feeling was when things were happening, including when genocide started, you know, it is hard to go back and tell the people what you are thinking. Honestly, I don't even remember some of the things I was thinking. <laughs> things were happening so fast, so uh, and it was so stressful. And um, I spent more time and energy trying to stabilize myself so that I don't collapse under the weight of uh, everything. But uh, focused on saying, first, if it is fighting, we must fight to win. If it is even politics, we must do the right thing politically, still make progress. And, um, and then when the genocide started, the immediate thing was to see fight the people who are killing, second, try to save as many people as we could, if they were possible, but same time collapsing the government that uh, was responsible for that. 
Well, we had many people. There's not a person even here, I'm sure among you, there's not a person here who doesn't have uh, a number of people who are killed. But we are known to them, we are relatives, we are parents, we are children, we are things like that. Uh, and, 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 and by the way, because uh, I've asked many times, you see, in, in a situation like ours, genocide is happening, there are perpetrators and victims. But overall, there is nobody who is not dying on either side. You are killing people they are in the genocide, you are therefore going for those you are targeting. And, but at the same time, those who are doing the killing of other people were also facing death from because we had to fight them. Uh, so in the end, nobody, there is not a single person of the millions here in Rwanda who would say they gained from this. <laughs> Everybody lost. Even those who started it and started killing people, they wanted to achieve something, but they didn't achieve it. Because what they intended to achieve was uh, not just killing a few, they wanted to exterminate people. A certain group of people, they, they thought they deserved that, or they wanted to, to kill. So it didn't happen because not everybody died. Uh, there is always uh, going to be people who will, will remain alive. And so I think that's uh, what else you want me to tell you. Yeah, thank <laughs> you, you very ask, much. Ask me anything. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for the context. Um, yes, I'm sure there's a lot of questions uh, from the crowd. Uh, so I'll open it up to the floor. Uh, please raise your hand if you have a question. And uh, before you ask your question, introduce yourself. Uh, tell us a little bit of who you are and then uh, address your question. Try to be as concise as possible. Skovia? I see you every day on the media, social media, <laughs> on the social media, yeah. Yeah. Murakoze, ikibazo cyanjye nashakaga kubaza usobanuye byinshi bigaragara inzira yari ikomeye ariko nagize ikibazo nifuza kubaza ese musobanura mute impamvu mwari mufite ikomeye yumvaga ko mushobora gutsinda ubutegetsi bwa Habyarimana bwa ari bufite ingabo zikomeye ndetse bashyigikiwe n'amahanga mu byukuri yumvikanaga nkakomeye nyuma yaho uyu mukanya tugeza aha general Kabarebe yadusobanuriye uko mwagiraga mu mutaru ko mwasanze bimeze ko byasaga nk'ibiteye ubwoba impamvu ikomeye mwagize mukumva ko muri butsinda urugamba kugeza uyu munsi nyuma y'imyaka 33 mwica yaho ndabashimira well ndakubwiza kuri nta ntabwo ari science ngo muri science narareba nkasanga turi butsinde cyangwa ntabwo ari it's not anything. Now, when I was young, I was very young. 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 If you see the Kubachira Hunga, Naguero, Nawari, Fitichis, the Rengu, you never go back again. Nabim Ukaba, who have taken as a Changababi for the Gumba Kujan, that's Kubian. Could you be me here? I repeat you, if you Vuga, you go on. Um, 
ndivyo mu Kinyarwanda Aho guteruko aho ndi ibindi imbere ngomba guhangana nabyo Um mfite uburyo bungana iki kugira ngo nkore kimwe cyangwa nkore ikindi ariko akabufite ibintu bibiri gusa kugamba era ndabihunga inigendere nkiza amagara yanjye kuko harababikoze barangwa bari yende babivamo no barakiruka nti baragaruka ibyo wabikora ikindi nokuvuga ngo aya nabo ndi ubugenze ibyo narwaneraga nubundi nokuri nokuri kwanje ngomba kubikomeza ni nabizera mbizire eh bo ni bintu bibiri rero yizura hunga cyangwa rasigara uhangane n'ikibazo ibi byo guhangana n'ikibazo byari mu bantu benshi n'icyo kiza cyabyo byari mu banyarwanda benshi ntabwo bari bake abahunze ngira ngo niwe bake kurusha basigaye bahangana n'ibibazo muri uko guhangana rero n'ibibazo nyine ngomba gukoresha rero ubwenge noneho gukoresha ubwenge ese guhangana n'ibibazo ute guhita mize ruhangana nabyo nayo noneho niho azira gukoresha mutima no bwenge ikabwo icyo gukora bitewe n'icyo ufite n'icyo uzi ku mwanzi no buryo bwo ku koresha kugira ngo utsinda ari urugamba rumwe hano cyangwa handi cyangwa utsinda urugamba runini rwo kurangiza icyo azo cyose ikindi kize nta na chimi cyari gihari cyahuntu wari wese yewe nabatsinzwe banza batare bazi ko bazatsinda babaga bazi ko ni leta bafite byangombwa byose bumvaga baraho twebwe bitaga inyenzi bazatunyura hejuru gusaba ka leta natwe kubera aho aho twavaga nuko twari tumeze no gushobozi Tariwa Yeje, Tari de Fite, O Sibye, O Mutima, O Korebu, Shahukora, Orebu Koraga, Arikon Havgo, Ha Guarantee, Nachi, Huchakwe, Mesagango, if you want it, Rosabi Jarab, Arikon Bomba Kurwani, anyway, Kunicho, he said, No, and then you, Zari, Imperia, or Evaga, or Koresha was. So now, now that you're going to be Thank you so much, Your Excellency. My name is Eric. Uh, we just had a great visit of the site uh, that was your military base, and uh, it was a great visit. And then I went on to revisit one of the oldest video, but the famous one. Uh, where you were addressing your force, I think back in 1990, you told them in Swahili, I will quote, Jeshihili, it's a single of and then you went on to tell them, Sasa ndiyo mana matendo yetu yanapaso kuwa tofauti na yale ya wale tunapigana nao. For me, uh, these were super great values of RPA. So my question is, uh, how could you envision unity and integrity uh, knowing you were not even allowed in your country, even coming to visit your friends and family, uh, you could ski, uh, sneak in. 
Um, and then uh, we also had that uh, uh, not here. I think I need to uh, fact check this that uh, some of the Abdelimana forces that were wounded during war, some of them were treated here. And then uh, where did these values come from and how uh, do they remain the foundational values of RPF today? Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, societies uh, anywhere or people, whatever, um, have values, certain beliefs, what they think is the right thing to, to believe in. Uh, and then, um, so Rwandans have values, there's no question about it. Uh, in, in fact, uh, that, that uh, to an extent explains the, the problem the world has. Um, in the world, there are some people in some parts of the world who think they are the only ones who have values and their values must be conformed to by others. <laughs> which uh, I personally feel insulted by and could not accept, can't accept it. It is not true. There, there are no people with better values than others. And, and better, how would you measure that? Better in what sense? So, with the Rwandan values, and, and even with the effort to try and integrate the values, your own values, with other people's values, so that um, it is broadened, or you look at it, uh, in a global context, the way it should be. Um, the governance of the country, the politics of the country, ordinarily should reflect the values of that society. So, for a long time, in Rwanda, we had our own values even before, then colonialism, okay, we can talk about that briefly, brought their own values, then gave uh, or distorted the values of, of Rwandans, and, and unfortunately, Rwandans came to accept the distorted values as their own. What do I mean here? Having a country that is divided on ethnic basis isn't part of the values we should be, uh, we should espouse, uh, we shouldn't. But that's what happened. So the RPF the origin of it, much as it is problems that uh, happened to some Rwandans, uh, not only those living in the country, but especially those outside as refugees. Um, for things to go back to the right order, the, the politics must be bringing back the unity of the country so that we are no longer ethnic groups but rather the integration of that into or by national unity uh, so that, that's that's really how rpf was born it's the foundation of rpf so what i was saying to the fighters at that time is clearly in narrating to them the story of who we are 
or rather reminding them, <laughs> because I, I think everyone knew, but people don't always do things based on what they know they should be doing. So I was just reminding them, or I was telling them that uh, this struggle has a meaning. It's not just fighting and you kill, they kill, and, <laughs> and you take over. You, you, even if you take over an authority or, or into government, you are there, you should be there for a purpose. It's, it's not uh, just taking over, <laughs> it's there for a purpose. Uh, so that's what I was, and, and I knew, that, of course, even as now, it still is. Even the RDF that uh, transitioned from the RPA uh, into the current uh, uh, defense force we have, um, is the center, is for the center of gravity here yeah, of what we are uh, doing in the country or the country what it is what it is uh, security stability social economic development and so on and so forth that message uh, and which they all understood uh, still plays part in what we are doing today, or who we are today, or what we want to be in the future. Yes, that, that differentiation between uh, those who were fighting that later on committed genocide, or some of them had done so, actually, in uh, many other, remember this, genocides of the 60s, of the 70s. Uh, so, I was saying, we, we, we are there, we are fighting for a cause that will change all that and create Rwanda to be what it should be. Uh, so, that is even the, the message today, even tomorrow. <laughs> well, if we, we can fail to, to achieve it, but it remains, the, it stays the message. <laughs> is what should be driving us uh, uh, even politics we are doing even the elections we are preparing for tomorrow and the campaign is here running up and down I'm not running up and down for nothing <laughs> I'm running up and down for that message <laughs> and I to present it and put it where it belongs and give it the results it should have. Mm. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, more questions? Um, Joel? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President, Paul Kagame. Um, so my question goes, my name, first of all, my name is Tukwede Joel. I'm a content creator and a proud first-time voter. Mm. My question is, um, your name so is... So when you were here, you probably were not yet born. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad to be voting for the first time. All right. Um, so my question is, your name is one that is known for intentional leadership, but today we'd like to know how do you take care of Paul Kagame beyond the official roles that you play? Mm. 